Hello, everybody. This game... That bit's annoying. <laughs> this game is called Threat Gen Red vs. Blue. This is released September 4th, 2019, developed and published by DeRezzed. DeRezzed. It is, uh, let's see, Threat Gen Red vs. Blue is an educational game-based cybersecurity simulator designed for those with genuine interest in cybersecurity. Learn and practice cybersecurity concepts and strategy. Play as the red team, hackers, or a blue team, defenders, single player, or online versus a colleague. Now, I've uh, played a fair number of games on this channel, um, and I have a fair few more to do. There seems to be no end of them. Now, I gen generally will judge uh, a game based upon certain criteria if it bills itself as a, if it uses the term hacking simulator, quote unquote hacking simulator, then I judge it as a hacking simulator, meaning that it needs to get those details right, or <clears throat> I am not going to hold it to that standard. It will essentially fail. There are some that are hacking puzzle games, and those I judge at a lower standard. Um, those I expect to be puzzle games with like a hacking aesthetic, you know, and by that I mean like sunglasses, hoodies, gray hats, white hats, black hats, um, uh, using the terminal window to run commands, um, and the challenge is not from the hacking aspect, but usually from solving a riddle or a puzzle of some kind using those tools. This one is the first one I've ever encountered that actually bills itself as quote unquote educational um, for those with a genuine interest in cybersecurity, which means that this, in my opinion, should be held to an even higher standard than a hacking simulator. And it better be, because if this is everything they say it will be, um, this is something that I could really use in my, my job as an educator. So. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't know why all of a sudden I have a frog in my throat. All right. So play as blue team or play as red team. Um, in my professional capacity in, uh, in the field of cybersecurity before. Excuse me. Before becoming an educator full time. I have had an opportunity to do both. Uh, I suppose we will start with blue team. Randomly select some environment. Pipeline company. Um, so it looks like we're getting to start off. So the the uh, in cybersecurity, there is the concept of what are known as critical infrastructure areas. And this comes out of government initiatives to organize a cybersecurity effort across uh, the United States. And those uh, critical areas uh, include various different industries, such as healthcare, um, telecom, um, electricity, that kind of thing. So this is kind of like we're picking something like that. Um, we can randomly select an environment, but, or we can choose a pipeline company, which would be, um, like a, an oil refinery or, or something in the energy sector, which in the critical infrastructure areas, the energy sector includes, uh, oil, natural gas, um, solar and hydroelectric and nuclear and that kind of thing. We will be dealing with industrial control systems. Um, so yes, that is something that you encounter in these industrial systems. Um, in the form of a supervisory control and data acquisition system, so a SCADA system, as well as a distributed control system. Those are both real terms, and they seem to be used appropriately. Uh, then we have manufacturing. So manufacturing in a small environment with an industrial control system in the form of a single distributed control system. Okay. Uh, and then we have a large oil and gas company. So back into that energy sector kind of realm, which I am applying these real world world to, terms to it. Uh, the game is not doing that, so I'm not going to fault them for having both a pipeline company and large oil and gas company, although what they're considering to be the difference, one would be distribution, the other one would be uh, manufacturing or production. Uh, large environment with industrial control systems. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between oil and gas and the pipeline company anyway. Um, let's start with manufacturing. I already don't like the aesthetic here with the guy. I, 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 that's a personal pet peeve, though. So I, I don't, I've never been a fan of the, the cutesy corporate security mascot thing. 
It just irritates me. We have a quote from Dr. Henry Kissinger. Chess has only two outcomes, draw and checkmate. The objective of the game is total victory or defeat. The aim of go is relative. The aim of go is relative advantage. The objective is to increase one's... Oh, go the game. Yeah, yeah, go the game, of course. Uh, the objective is to increase one's options and reduce all these, those of the adversary. The goal is less victory than persistent strategic progress. I don't know if that's an actual quote from Dr. Henry Kissinger, but the game is attributing that. It does sound like something Kissinger would say. So, we begin as a blue team cybersecurity specialist. Your mission is to protect your industrial control system by bolstering your defenses, training your staff, identifying your vulnerabilities, and continue to improve your cybersecurity posture. Sorry, your security posture. Beginning with limited resources, you have your work cut out for you. You have more than enough tools to choose from, but they all come with a cost and take time to implement. Convincing management for more budget is an option, but it's not easy. You must choose your strategy carefully. However, because the red team is always lurking and looking for a way in make a wrong move and you could find yourself shifting mission priority from defense to instant response uh, i gotta say that's a pretty succinct description of what it is like uh to be a cyber to work in cybersecurity in a in a in this sector i mean that's absolutely true um i can't think of a single thing that that is incorrect about it to be honest with you um, that is the balancing act. That's, that's what you do. I will say one thing, um, and this is not a critique of this in particular, but it does say that the position here is a blue team cybersecurity specialist. That's not really a very common job title in cybersecurity. Generally speaking, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different avenues you can get to and cybersecurity specialist is one that I would not bat an eye at if I encountered it on the real world, but it is not a very common one. Typically speaking, uh, on the blue team side anyway, uh, when you when you first begin work in cybersecurity, uh, what you're trying to do is gain an entry-level cybersecurity position, which would be an analyst position, not a specialist. A specialist, to me, would denote somebody who is probably a contractor who has been brought in for a either a limited term engagement or a permanent employee who has been hired for one specific task. So for example, um, a cybersecurity analyst would be more of a, uh, a generalist in cybersecurity who may be doing various different tasks. Somebody who had the title of specialist, I would assume without knowing anything else about them, is that they were brought on board, for example, to uh, run their um, SIEM or um, SOC or, or some one particular type of thing. Uh, so for example, a, a SOC manager, I might, cons like if I heard that you're a cybersecurity specialist and then I ask you what you do and you were to say, well, I'm the SOC manager, I take care of all that kind of stuff, I'd say that makes sense. That's, that's a specialist type of position. Uh, another thing I notice is that if this is supposed to be us, if this is a visual representation of us as a character, I will tell you that as somebody who has been in hiring and has been hired for cybersecurity positions, uh, that as a hirer, if somebody came in looking like this, I would absolutely not give them the job. Um, I, there is no way I could uh, I could ever <laughs> trust somebody <laughs> who makes a decision like this. And I'm not exactly a straight laced corpo type or anything like that either. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I'm I, I if not by any means, but. This is uh, showing some questionable choices and perhaps impulse control issues. Uh, uh, and honestly, it's the glasses or the glass, right? Because it's glasses. But if you're only wearing one, then it's a glass. Um, which maybe that maybe that is a Google Glass. Maybe I don't know. All right, let's start this game. I'm running out of time. I got somewhere I got to be today. Blue team, it is now your turn. By the way, this is uh, also billed as a hacking turn-based strategy game and a simulation game, and it's also tagged with PvP. Okay, uh, so here we are, here's our manufacturing plant. We got a couple people over here, we got a truck, here's our plants. Uh, clock is ticking, I've got limited amount of time to make a decision, but I also am not being provided much information regarding exactly what is, uh, maybe, no, there was no tutorial offered to me, so. Security architecture actions, what do we got here? Gateway firewall. Um, some kind of an investment in a firewall, I'm guessing. Uh, hire new staff. Install okay. Install a seam. So a security incident and event management system, by the way, a seam. Asset inventory. Uh, is there a way to pause this so I can comment on this? I'm gonna run out of time just talking. Otherwise, 
Physical security actions. Yes, this is uh, one thing that's often overlooked by cybersecurity people. Physical security and cybersecurity are the exact same thing. And in many, many places I've been at, it has been the responsibility of the security office, uh, which means the cybersecurity office also do physical security, at least over cyber physical cyber assets, like the server room or uh, what have you. Uh, we have two higher new staff. Must just be for that. All right, well, if I have $50,000, I've got three staff members, uh, and I need to make a choice, um, and I have nothing right now, I'm assuming, um, then I guess the question is, is where do I, where would I put my resources first if I had $50,000 in my cybersecurity budget and I had nothing? Um, well, I don't really know. I have, I mean, I've, I've done cybersecurity in manufacturing before, but it's been years I don't know what the current threat landscape is like, and this is not that old of a game. It's only 2019 is when it was released, and then my last foray into manufacturing was far before that. What is this? Program governance actions. Um, all right, if I if I have a limited budget, I'm definitely going to get the seam, and I'm definitely going to get a gateway firewall. Uh, can I upgrade those already? Or oh, can I only do? Oh, oh no, those are green now. Okay. 40 seconds left. Uh, asset inventory. Um, policies and procedures are important, but with a limited budget, we're definitely going to have to go with this. And, um, ooh, USB security. Oh, shit. What's this? Oh, it's, it's an asset level usb security or uh, yeah okay uh then definitely the dc um and uh video surveillance oh i what i don't have enough resources oh my i have to have enough people to implement them gotcha 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 okay makes sense all right next turn notification start monitoring enable the security monitoring in place you're no longer in the dark now you will know when an asset has been hacked okay great uh, perimeter firewall. Good thinking. You don't want the bad guys just walking right in. Now that your perimeter is secure, it's time to get to work securing the rest of our systems and network. And USB implemented over our DC. Okay. Um, uh, next step. Okay, so there is a progression tree uh, for for these. Um, endpoint detection, log collection and analysis. And then there was the video surveillance we haven't done just yet. Um, oh, we have, uh, we're using Elk for our seam. That's a very good product. I really like Elk. Juniper firewall. Windows machines. I don't see any Linux. Oh, wait, what's this? I don't know what OS that is off, off the top of my head here. Just looking at this. Uh, we need to, this is a manufacturing plant, so we need to make sure we protect our manufacturing process uh, already. The DC will protect our user and entitlement repository, um, although we just have USB over it right now. So uh, let's move up to a segmented network. Let's do... Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to need a new staff member and we won't be able to do anything. Oh, that's 45,000. Why is it in two places? I don't know if, oh, I need to, I need, I need a, uh, a staff member to hire a staff member. I mean, which is true. I've spent a lot of time and, uh, uh, in meetings and shit for, for the hiring process. It is, depending on where you're at, it is not a, um, it is not a, uh, short process by any means. All right, so uh, this is a little odd. We, I've opted for log collection, and it's giving me um, asking me what the target for log collection is. We have elk, uh, which means that log collection is, I mean, it does require a per-device configuration, but it's like 30 seconds once you have a script for it. Um, but we will do at our perimeter firewall right here. Oh, I don't have enough resources anyway. I need, I need to hire somebody is what I need to do. So we're going to have to wait until we have resources available. Does anything here not require any people? That'll require staff. That'll require staff. Because that's that's where my head is at right now. Is um, you know, if, if what resources do we have available? Um, what can we do with what we have? 
Uh, action tree. Oh, 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 cool. We can actually see our progression. Uh, VPN is after segment. Um, Two-factor authentication. Hell yes. Hell yes. That's what we're going to be working towards next. Um, I'm not sure how exactly we get there. So it's through the policy and procedure street. Okay, well, I, didn't, I ran out of time. Um, uh, that clock ticking is uh, something else. All right, we're going to skip the VPN for now. Um, I really want to get to two-factor authentication, um, but I feel like I don't have any employees right now, so we're going to need to... Uh, all right, so we're going to want two-factor authentication, uh, network-level encryption, strong passwords. Um, notice I'm saving all of the soft stuff. Now, I don't want to make it seem as if that's not important. It's, in fact, terribly, terribly important, but we have started out with nothing. And uh, what that means is that we need to get some technical controls in place before we start worrying about administrative or operational controls. We have to get something. Damn, I'm kind of liking this. I'm not. I'm not lying. Uh, this this kind of. I mean, it's not exactly living up to its its. What's this? What's the network view? Mode view. Oh, okay. I I don't know what the point of mode view is here. All right. <clears throat> I don't have anybody to hire staff. Oh, I don't have any money for hiring staff. I need 45. So we're going to need to request budget. Oh, I need a person to request budget too. Um, I don't have the resources for anything. Everything's tied up right now. So let's end our turn early because I just, unless there's something I can do with these. Ooh, oh, you can. Log collection and analysis is already on there. USB. Oh, you can also make the request from here. Nice. Very nice. I also want to get endpoint detection for the DC. So our, our most critical assets here uh, and this network uh, uh, topology that we have here is not unusual. It's not exactly for the best. Um, but we have a perimeter firewall here. Kathy42 would be a, a machine out on the internet. Here's our internet. This is our perimeter firewall. That connects to our server. Uh, then these junipers here our oh our junipers they're just our switches okay yeah i see the icon now i didn't see it before here we have an access point uh juniper also makes firewall appliances so when i saw that i thought they were internal firewalls and i mean they may have onboard firewalls um anyway uh here's our dc um and our our seam uh that's about where they ought to be um i we don't have a dmz uh, because we shouldn't have any public facing assets um at least Nothing I see in here leads me to believe that. Um, action log. Uh, oh, a certain number of turns. I see. That's why I'm not getting my people back. It takes time. Gotcha. Um, I did implement... Um, I can't actually view any logs. So, what's the question? Oh, okay, I ran out of time. Okay. <clears throat> Asset inventory completed. You know, if they say you can't protect what you don't know you have, that is exactly what they say. You can't protect it if you don't know it's there. Threat monitoring able. The security monitoring place, you're no longer in the dark. Now you will know when an asset's been hacked. Okay, that's what, it, that's what we had before. Okay, and I got a person low on cash. Um, so... What's my turnaround here? I'm going to have two people um back to me in a little bit here so let's actually instead of requesting new staff right away although we we really are going to need it soon um i want to get to a couple of other things here which i oh that requires two people to do multi-factor authentication i want to do a couple of other things here that that are gonna oh you can drill down and you can get even more information on this that is nice um how many what how many resources do i need for that oh two i need two people two people three turns um okay then let's do something quick and easy here that will be done fast uh usb security on an asset would be nice threat monitoring would be nice we can do log collection on something else what did i do log collection on already we did it on the uh, perimeter firewall right Install network security sensor. Oh, that would be a good one too. But let's do 
Uh, let's do endpoint detection here on our DC. And end our turn. <clears throat> okay. Uh, oh, we might... Well, I'm going to do these one at a time, and I'm going to work my way up, because this is looking like it might actually be a good thing. Endpoint detection installed. Okay, good. Good baseline security. With your perimeter secured, network segmented, and security monitoring deployed, you've got a solid baseline. That is true. Network segmentation was finished. This is what I wanted to see. The Purdue model. Wasting no time with proper network segmentation. This should stop the bad guys from running freely through your network if they do get in. This is an actual model, a security model. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Shrek. Well, okay. I mean, it's Shrek. So... But uh, yeah, this is an actual security model, and it is the one that I just followed. I, I mean, I didn't call it out because I didn't expect the game to call it out, but I'm pleasantly surprised. And here's all of our segmented networks. Let's see if they're segmented appropriately. Uh, we have, looks like, uh, employee workstations. Uh, here we have, this is a little strange. We have a server um uh, a, seg a network segment for for servers, you know, a database, and um, and uh, and but we have an access point here as well. Oh, this is supposed to be our DMZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Master M DMZ. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why why that would be. These server assets shouldn't be in the DMZ. Um, server firewall, DMZ firewall. In any event, I'm not mad at it. It's just that they shouldn't be there. Uh, we also have a server over here for some reason. And then, yeah, we have this. Our industrial control systems. I'm... I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, okay, let's... First, let's do what we needed to do with this so we can get some of the... Uh, okay, since it mentioned the Purdue model, let me call out what, I'm, what my next move is then. And we'll see if the game can pick up on that. Um, so we went with the route, uh, we were starting at square zero, we had no technical controls, we had no administrative controls, we had nothing. Um, so the first couple steps I made was to implement technical controls to essentially establish a security zone around our area, around our assets. Um, and that is the Purdue model. Now that we have done that, and that work is not completely done, there's still more that we can do, but we have a good base now. Now I'm going to pivot to end user technical controls and then endpoint technical controls so that we have uh, we can establish security zones inside our perimeter so the, the what we started out with was just a we had one security zone there's zone zero which is out in the public there's nothing we can do about that and then we had zone one which was everything in our asset uh, in our uh, network I mean oh shit <laughs> ran out of time uh, shit I was gonna hire staff fuck <laughs> it's my fault for jabbering uh all right anyway um so yeah we had two security zones uh we had us and everything else um that uh perimeter is now zone one and then we have a, a new zone behind that uh, perimeter zone which is zone two and now we need to work internally to be able to build out internal security zones so that we can have uh zones three four and possibly five and what i mean by that is is that you demarcate your sensitive assets by security zone uh, so that you can apply more security layers as you get deeper deeper into the network so uh, we have our perimeter now we're working on uh on everything else all right i don't have uh enough money to hire a person, but we are going to need that, so I am going to request budget at this point. Um, and now I'm out of people, and let's follow our tree, and as I was saying, now we're going to work on our end user and endpoint security features, so two-factor authentication, one of the best things that you can possibly do to protect um, user credentials. Um, even poor implementations of two-factor authentication are better than none. Um, and uh, they're not particularly expensive. I mean, in this case, none of the stuff, like the, the monetary value assigned to things is anywhere near what it would cost in, in the real world. But the cost to hire a new staff, which is only 45,000, relative to the cost of two-factor authentication seems about right to me. Um, I don't know why it's 45,000, because 45,000, even for an entry-level security analyst is very low, very, very low. Um, 
I think my first job, and this was many, many years ago, uh, my first job in cybersecurity was uh, around $60,000 a year. And then I was making $80,000 a year um, around a year later. Uh, and then about three years into my career, I moved to another company doing something else. And then I did consulting for a while, but there was never a time in my cybersecurity career when I made $45,000 a year. It, I mean, I suppose when I was a student, um, I made less than that or around that. Yeah, it was around that. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, end user protections, two-factor authentication. Enforcing strong passwords is actually less of a concern after you have two-factor authentication, but I'm still going to do so because industrial control systems and a lot of these uh, other industrial areas um, will have legacy systems or systems that don't do multi-factor authentication or cannot do multi-factor authentication. Um, and so enforcing strong passwords, uh, passwords is a low cost, as you can see, it costs us nothing, uh, but a low cost good measure uh, of security it's just another layer that's in there um we will get around uh to uh creating back well creating backup processes will be important as well uh harden rdp i don't think we probably i don't i don't know what we have here as far as rdp uh, uh, you know this is a manufacturing plant we shouldn't have our uh, rdp uh, being a problem for us so but maybe it is i, I don't know um Security awareness training uh, isn't on my radar just yet, but when I get to soft skills, that is probably where I'm going to start. And when I say soft skills, uh, what I mean are uh, things like end user training. Um, these penetration tests uh, don't do us any good until we have what we believe to be a fairly secure baseline. Um, vulnerability assessment is going to be a step before that, obviously, as it is here in the tree. Um, and so on. But these, these are the, in, I, and I love me some intelligence. Don't get me wrong. I love me some Intel, um, but we're not ready for it yet. We're just not. Um, all right. So I don't have any people just yet. I got to wait for them to do their thing. Um, let's, uh, while we have a little time on the clock here, let's poke around here a little bit and see what these information are. Manufacturing processes. Um, the uh, double-edged sword here with network segmentation is that now we have more security appliances on the network and not all of them are being um, logged, right? So that is, uh, we just have more security appliances and we don't have all of the logs yet. Logging is really important. That's that Intel piece. Um, Now that we have a segment also for our actual manufacturing process, uh, these are going to be uh, prime targets for those endpoint security protections uh, in a couple of turns when we get to it. But I don't have any people right now. I have a little bit of money. I don't have any people. So let's end our turn. Um, threat intelligence score. Company profits. Policies and procedures completed. Okay, now that that is done, we still don't have enough money to hire another person, but we have some people freed up. So let's do what we do. Uh, let's do, well, let's see what it says here. Does it tell us what we, we actually gain? Like now I'm starting to think of this. I, I have been thinking of this uh, in terms of a cybersecurity professional, which is actually a good thing because that's what the game is billing itself as. But um, I need to start thinking about this in terms of the game and game theory because um it just occurred to me that i'm doing these things because i know what they are but i don't know what they're actually providing me in terms of changing my stats in the game it also doesn't say it here so game concepts oh, i'm running out of time let's just pull the trigger on multi-factor authentication my people are committed to that now um what's this okay what's this Oh, that's the alerts. What's this? That's the help file. What's this? Eight of 75. Oh, is that the number of turns? The game ends after 75 turns. Um, Threat intelligence score. We can't get any more information on that. Vendor certification status. You can do vendor certs in this game. Are you serious? I still don't know what mode view is supposed to be. Is it just a picture of the plant, or is there something I need to be monitoring over here? I don't know. All right, end our turn.
budget request failed. What? What do you mean failed? We're going to need that money. God, this game really is just like the real world. If we ask again, they'll throw us 500 bucks and say, do what you can with that. That's all we have. All company profits soar. Um, okay. Well, that being the case, I guess I only have one person and now I have a limited budget to work with. Um, we could use those incident response procedures, but let's see where we're at here. Um, we need, let me guess, we need the IR plan before we can do, um, incident response. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually we can't do two-factor authentication and strong passwords. It blanked that out for us now as a possibility, but... If you were to ask me, given a choice, if I was at a company that was doing nothing currently for uh, end-user credential protection, would I rather do multi-factor or just do strong passwords for free? It would be multi-factor every day of the week. Every single day. Um, okay, well anyway, since we're here, um, we are going to need those IR procedures, and uh, we, we can commit our person to that. That's also one of those things where it's like, in terms of IT governance, which also does fall under the umbrella of information assurance or security, um, um, it's one of your most important procedures to write. Okay. All right. Um, all my people are committed. I'm starting to run out of money. Um, Uh, next turn, I think I'll get my people back, though. Okay, let's check. Alright. MFA is done. I got my two people back. Um, I should send one of them out to request a budget again, but let's see if we can put them on something else. Um, software development lifecycle. I don't see why we would need this at a manufacturing plant. I don't think we're developing our own software in-house i also don't think we need rdp because we shouldn't have this shouldn't be a thing um and if it is they should probably tell me um we're not quite at uh vulnerability assessment yet uh we're not ready for any vendor certifications at this point we're getting there we are we, we are very close to the getting there but we're not quite there yet um log collection and analysis i thought that was something i did on a per machine level yeah, it is. Um, boy, there are several things I would like to put that on, but let's check and see what else we got here first. Install physical. Okay, well, uh, electronic locks would be a good idea, or this video surveillance system. Let's spend the money on the surveillance system and commit one person to that while we have the money to do it. And the other person, let's put on... Um, the electronic locks wouldn't be a bad idea, but let's hold off on that. Um, let's start getting that vulnerability assessment done. Oh, I need two people to do that. Vulnerability assessment would be useful, but that's okay. We have plenty of other work to do here. Now let's do that network level encryption. Okay. IR is done. Request that money. We're going to need that money. And network traffic is done. Let's put that guy on. Yep, time to start worrying about disaster recovery and continuity. So let's do that backup process. And then I'm going to need to start budgeting a lot better. Don't get me wrong, 50000 for a complete security program from the ground up is just fucking nuts. Um, There's no way that it would... Oh, 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 no, wait, hold on a sec. The vulnerability mapping is what allows us to unlock system hardening and stuff, so yeah. 
That's where we're going with that. And then if I can get the budget, we'll hire another person who can start doing AV and stuff. Loiter removed from the perimeter. A suspicious person was caught loitering around the perimeter of the grounds. Okay, so that physical security was paying for itself, it looks like. Video surveillance itself. Okay. Gotcha. 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 I got my person's freed up. All right. Until vulnerability mapping is done, uh, you can work on the electronic locks. Vulnerability mapping completed. Excellent. Uh, hold on a sec. Now that we have that done, now we have some insight into our environment. We can see that uh, we have some machines here that... What does this mean here? Incorrect access control. Heap overflow. Holy shit. Integer overflow. No patch currently available. This is a... Uh, Default credentials enabled. Okay, so how do we... Let's check the tree here. It looks like maybe these... Um, yeah, system patches, update firmware. So this is how we deal with those problems. Gotcha. Okay, well then let's, let's try one. Let's try one. Um... Let's find one that no patch currently available. There's one I, I just want to tr no patch currently available. So, no patch available. Outdated firmware. That's going to cost us money though. Firmware, I think. Yeah, that's okay. I want to take care of those industrial control systems. Um. Oh, I still have another person free as well. All right, let's see what else we can do. Incorrect access control. So, uh, change the default credentials pen testing system. Is it system hardening then that we're supposed to use in order to fix that? Yeah. All right. Budget Defender. You eliminated vulnerabilities without requesting a single dime. Well, I mean, I did. I just didn't get it. Uh, careful, you might set a precedent. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to. You don't want to show what you can do with uh with with not enough, um, because you do not get rewarded for that. So you get ten thousand dollar bonus for this firmware. Even embedded devices require patching. And yep, gotcha. And a vulnerability mitigated. Nice, 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 nice. Incorrect access. I thought we hardened that. Um. I thought I put somebody else on requesting budget. Isn't this the one that failed? No, it failed again. You son of a bitch. Get back in that office. You tell him we need more money right now. Tell him the fucking world's gonna end. Electronic locks installed. All right. Electronic locks aren't necessarily any more. Oh, we're starting to get attention here. Aren't necessarily any more secure than than standard locks. It's it's all just, they're just different access control devices. Keys can be very secure. Uh, generally, electronic locks just are more convenient because when a key is lost, um, then you end up having to uh, you know rekey the door and so on. So. Um, all right, let's do vulnerability assessment while well, we have two people available and the funds to do it. And we are out of people, so that will be it for that. Um, so yeah, electronic locks just tend to be more um, convenient. Uh, when a key is lost, then the door has got to be rekeyed, and then every other copy of that key you have floating around has to be replaced, which means you have to have key tender procedures and so on, and it's just a pain in the butt. Whereas with an electronic lock, if it's a badge, you can deactivate individual badges without having to, you know, set up the whole system all over again or, or do anything physically with the door. Um, they're not really any more secure or anything like that. A, a key can be copied from a photograph or an impression. It can be stolen. It can be lost. It can be duplicated. Um, an RFID badge that you might get very easily duplicate to, lo to lose, to steal, and, and clone, and that kind of a thing. Um, so, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, except it is more convenient when it's an electronic lock.
Um, that's going to be it for part one. And I do say part one because I am going to come back on this one again. I don't know if I can actually save this game. But while it's paused here, I suppose I'll do my outro. Um, so this game built itself as a cybersecurity simulator designed for those with a genuine interest in cybersecurity. This is not a hacking simulator. It does not build itself as a hacking simulator. Um, it builds itself as a cybersecurity simulator. And to that so far, and I've been playing 40 minutes or so, um, it seems to be holding up. Uh, this is not like it is in the real world, but the concepts are real. The decision-making process is real. It's using actual terms. What I'm seeing makes sense. It's got me thinking like a cybersecurity expert and not a person playing a game. Um, I like it. So far, it is what it says on the tin, and that is awesome because I did not even realize a game like this existed. So I will be back for a part two, and we are at least going to finish out one uh, round here because we are on turn 17 of 75, and we're going to make it to the end. Um, or we'll get hacked and lose before then. But one way or another, we'll be here together for that journey. So take care, and I will see you in part two of this one.